The Trinity is the belief that there is one God in three persons. In terms of our reason, we would think of God as one. There has to be one principle behind all things that exist. One cause, a prime mover. And then in Revelation, in the Old Testament, the way God had taught the world was that he was one. Remember the words to Moses, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your strength. These were the key words for the Jewish people who clung to the notion of the one God against all the peoples who well, had many gods around them. But when Jesus Christ revealed himself, he taught us about the inner life of God, which we could not know by our reason alone. We got the inside information. Jesus Christ taught us that there was an eternal relationship between himself and the Father, and that also the Holy Spirit was sent by the Father and Son, who was one with them. Before his ascension, Jesus Christ commands the apostles to baptize in the onoma, in the name, singular name, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No mistaking, this is singular, the three persons, but one name, one God. And this has been the Christian belief from the beginning. Botticelli was a well-known painter of the early Renaissance who worked in Florence, often under the patronage of the Medici family. He was commissioned to paint this altarpiece for the church of the Augustinian canons, which had been built to house former prostitutes in Florence. The image we see is complex. At its centre is the Trinity, shown in the form of God the Father holding the cross upon which Christ is crucified, the dove of the Holy Spirit between them. To the side stand St Mary Magdalene and St John the Baptist. St Mary Magdalene was probably included because she was viewed in this period as a repentant sinner, a fallen woman herself who had come to Christ. Her penitence is emphasised by her straggly figure, emaciated and gaunt, praying intently to the Trinity. On the other side, John the Baptist, who was the patron saint of Florence, invites us, the viewer, to look in and to look upon the Trinity. And what do we see? Well, we see Christ crucified. Botticelli seems to emphasise the pathos and suffering of the scene, not only in the figure of crucified Christ, but also in the figure of God the Father, who is painted as an older man holding the cross upon which his son was crucified. The diminutive figures of the Archangel Raphael and Tobias can be seen at the front of the altarpiece, making their journey across the landscape. I think the difference in perspective between the figures of Raphael and the Trinity emphasise the notion of this being a divine image. Mary Magdalene and John the Baptist look at the Trinity in heaven, above the altar where it was originally sited. This has been the Christian belief from the beginning. That's why at every baptism, from the early church onward, people are asked, do you believe in the Father? Do you believe in the Son? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? And they were baptized in that name. All the creeds of the church are divided into three parts because of the Trinity. We're looking at an icon of the Trinity by Andrei Rublev, who was canonized by the Russian Orthodox Church in the 1980s. The icon is also known as the Hospitality of Abraham, and that is because it shows three figures described in the book of Genesis who visited Abraham in the Vale of Mamre. Abraham brought out food to the angels, but he is not in the image. Instead, the artist concentrates on the three figures of the angels, seated beautifully around the table. This Old Testament scene of Abraham visited by the three angels had been interpreted by theologians, including St. Augustine and St. Ambrose, as foreshadowing the Trinity. At the centre of the composition is the gold cup, referencing the Eucharist. And behind them, elements of the landscape in the biblical story are there. The mountain of Moriah is evident, 
We can also see the Oak of Mamre described in the depiction of Genesis, which might be a foreshadowing of the cross of Christ. Ribleff expertly shows us the interrelationship between the three persons. They are dressed differently, yet obviously related to one another. In this way, he emphasises that the Trinity are three persons and yet one. It's hard with our human minds to grasp this mystery. We've used various images over time, as St. Patrick used the shamrock, the one plant with the three leaves. Uh, Dante talked about three spinnings that were circling around one another. But all these images have limitations because they're physical images, and we only think by physical images. While the Trinity is spiritual, it's outside of the world of matter. And we're talking about three persons who don't establish, establish their relationships over time. They're always there, and one is not greater than the other. We have the lover, the beloved, and the love between, but this is an eternal movement. This is the very substance of God. God isn't an isolated monad in isolated splendor, but three persons in this eternal love. This is very important for the way we see the world and ourselves. Why would God reveal this inner scoop about himself, this information? Did he need to? Well, in the coming of Christ, we were invited to become his sons and daughters, his children. So he wants us to know about his inner life, which we will share, and that life of love, that dynamic, eternal life of love. And so it affects the way we see creation. It's a result of Trinitarian love. It affects the way we see one another. We are supposed to relate to one another as the image of God, to be in a relationship of love. It also changes the way we see our future in heaven, that we're to be one with this Trinity, these three persons, one God.